I hope you guys were excited as I were when I heard about the new Asterix version. If you haven't noticed, Asterix 12 has been released. It was notified on Asterix.org on December 20th. So it's still fairly new, but either way, it is out with some interesting new ideas and interesting new modules inside of this new version of Asterix that was not there in the older version. One of the big takes that I see inside of this new version is using PJ SIP as opposed to using the other module or the channel SIP inside of Asterix. So I'm actually very excited about that just to find out what this version of Asterix along with PJ SIP will do differently than the other versions. I suspect that a few things might be uh, uh, how light it could be also how customizable it could be as well but that's where we will be doing a few more testing with Asterix 12 just to confirm um, but this video that you are actually watching now consists of how to install this new version of Asterix uh, and it's fairly simple just a few things that this new version uh, require that it might have been carried over from Asterix 11 but for the build that you're seeing in front of you is the coming is coming from Asterix 1.8 going up to 12 so I, there might have been a few uh, repositories that I did not include because of that but either way uh, those will also be into the description and also on our website on how to install the Asterix 12 uh, so far a few other things that I've noticed that the new version uh, is adding or modifying is of course the smaller uh, re revisions for things like X, uh, Channel X and the other uh, modules but one that stood out for me is that they're planning on updating OH323 oh, I'm sorry OOH323 which is the, one of the H323 endpoint mo modules that you can install on the asterisk. I think that's very important really because uh, it involve it keeps from adding other third-party devices like Cisco or or Avaya devices where you can simply use the uh, Asterisk module uh, re reliably with conferencing or any type of endpoint that requires H323. So I'm actually very excited about that just to find out what they've actually changed on this model. So it's a little bit of a mystery to me and I, I didn't want to read too far into it because I wanted to kind of figure it out in some of the change logs. But of course you can always go to their website and pull uh, a lot of this information from the site. Also you can pull some of this information with our site as well. So be sure to go to the sites to check those out. But for this version of Asterix 12, uh, I'm, I'm very happy with so far or with it so far that I've messed with it. Haven't got my full details, my full review about it just yet. But I could definitely tell you that there are a few things that they have definitely changed in this version of Asterix 12. I'm looking forward to do that. Now, some of the some of the stipulations that I ran into is a different the different libraries such as Live64. So you definitely need to make sure that you've configured, I'm sorry, compiled the Asterix 12 correctly based on the architecture that you have. And also that will be part of the description. But also remember uh, so far this build works for uh, I've used it on CentOS 6.2 and also 5.9 final 32-bit and 64-bit they seem to work both uh, of course you have to modify the configure file to put all of the configure li libraries inside of the 64 or live 64 uh, uh, directory uh, but that's also being to the description as well uh, but for us the asterisk itself uh, it runs it runs natively with the older version of asterisk it doesn't really interfere with uh, the previous running asterisk server it just have a secondary or another entity if you will with PJ SIP you can actually register things directly with PJ SIP and also simultaneously with the ordinary SIP channel module at least from what uh, uh, it works for me so the, of course more testing will be needed to verify most of this but it works for me but also the inbound part seems to work as well but I have to do more testing so 
you can go ahead and say that there will be another video, <laughs> another video regarding uh, the review of how asterisks work hand in hand. So far, I built this on a semi-production box. It's a working production box, but not via what for for a house in this case. So I modified it and I rebuilt it from that aspect. And so far, I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, I was able to compile it without any problems and made a few test calls. It worked. Uh, this build was also under the PBX in a flash build. So I wanted to make sure that the new Asterisk 12 was acknowledged inside of the new uh, web GUI, which it does. And it works the same. Even there are a few more modifications that works uh, hand in hand with this version of Asterisk. So I didn't have any issues of making this work at all the only issue that I really ran into is just taking the time to actually go through all of the modules just to make sure I have everything set into play but other than that I didn't run into any problems with this so look inside of the description information so that you can actually see what all of the steps that I've taken to make sure it works so very specific things you might need especially one of them will be the live Janssen I think the live Janssen uh, repository I know I'm not saying that correctly I hope I am but it's L-I-B-J-A-N-S-S-O-N which that gave me most of the issues it, it, it had a hard time um, compiling that where Asterisk would see it but inside of the description there's a GitHub account that I've been using uh, that was provided by uh, asterisk.org or digium.com in this case so it does work you would also find an article of how to compile asterisk 12 under the free pbx.org and also the pbx in a flash dot org website so if you have any other issues you can always go there of course google as well you can put in the information that you have regarding the issue and it should spit back out uh, what some of the other community leaders or community uh, members done to get it to work but regardless it was not a difficult task it's just the main thing was having stuff having the repositories already configured and already installed and if I had all of that at one time it would have been a cinch but in this case I did not but if but either way look through this video and you see me type out some of the information it might be a little small but just follow along with the description and the comments in YouTube and you will see step by step of some of the stuff that I've done even some of the quirks that I needed to install very important but either way very easy to configure Okay, guys, that was it for this video. Uh, just go through the description information of how to install the Asterisk server. I don't think you will have any issues uh, installing it. Of course, you can always give us a call, shoot us an email, send us a comment on YouTube or any social media that we're on at the time. Uh, let us know how you feel about the new Asterisk version or if you're running into any issues let, let us know so we can actually try and fix those for you either way we are available as much as we can so if you have any questions issues comments or anything or just you might want to rant about the new version of Asterix and you don't really like it or have any issues with it I want to hear that from you because if they can't really fix it anything if you don't say anything you know so it's very important that you uh, speak your mind on this and either way let us know so we can try and help you out if you have any issues with it we might have some answers that can you know uh, keep things running for you without you uh, uh, going to the older version of Asterix or or any module in this case so be sure to like this video subscribe to our channel also be sure to go to our website we do have configurations there as well if you have any issues just let us know and I will see you guys next time